Hello, in today's video I try my hand at hairspray chipping. I make something that would probably get me stopped by the TSA at the airport. All in the effort to make a mine, heavily inspired by Luke Town and Boy Light Hobby Time. Ever since each one of their videos came out, I knew I just had to make one myself. This is actually my second attempt at trying to make this mine. Over a year and a half ago, before I even posted anything on YouTube, I had tried making one but ultimately gave up on it. So I'm glad I came back to do this because again, I think this idea is a really cool idea and I wanted to put my own twist on it. So to start from the beginning, we're going to start with the base. Is it a base or is it a face? Either way, because this is going to be vertical. Base, face. Either way, I used some polystyrene. I glued both pieces together and sketched out where I wanted the tunnels and shafts to go. I finally have gone through all of my stash of plaster rocks and decided to make some more. These are just the Woodland and Scenics rock molds that I normally use, but you can also use a tinfoil ball and crunch it up and unravel it to create a similar rock texture. It's not to the same quality as the Woodland ones, but it's still good enough, especially once they're painted up, it's pretty good. For the rocks, I just use plaster of Paris mixed with some water, and I pre-apply water to the molds just so the plaster can flow a little better and it just doesn't grab immediately when I pour it in. There's no need for any kind of mold release because of how flexible the molds are. I went with some thinner rocks to make sure they would fit in the space, so you're not really getting all the value out of the Woodland Scenics molds, and it's actually kind of where the tinfoil ball mold comes in the best because you can actually lay it out as flat as possible. Any cracks or breaks in the rocks when trying to release them from the molds isn't a big deal. We're going to have to be making a whole bunch of these rocks anyways, and they'll all need to be blended. Not too bad for a piece of tinfoil. To glue the rocks in place, I decided to use some all-purpose joint compound. I never actually have used a joint compound to glue down rocks before. I wanted the compound to kind of like ooze out in between the seams to cover up the foam and the gap between the rocks, and ultimately give me something to chip away at to help blend the rocks together. I found the best way to blend between them was actually using a wet paintbrush to help just dab in between and smooth out the transition and once it was dry to chip away at some of the more offending or raised bits. I then whipped up another batch of some concrete, which is just plaster of Paris mixed with some gray tile grout and some sand or dirt from my backyard. After pouring the cement, I used the leftovers to make some concrete slabs. This is the same form I used in my Survivor Outpost diorama, but it's just a simple styrene form the only difference being, instead of using tool fabric, I used drywall tape to give the slabs a little bit more rigidity. Since I'm going for a faded, abandoned, weathery look, I ended up using a sponge just to dab on the paint, not really caring if some of the gray showed through. I used a wet sponge to help smudge the line between the white and the green. I then added some cracks and softened them up with a toothbrush. Weathered it further using some rough sandpaper and a hobby knife. Then a very dilute black wash. Moving on from the walls, I then wanted to try making a tiled floor. So I used a larger piece of that slab and I scribed in some tiles using the back side of the hobby knife. After scribing in the lines, I used a toothbrush to help soften the edges and chip away little bits here and there. Much like with the walls, I just used a sponge to dab on the paint, again, not really caring if any of that gray shows through. I then wanted to add a couple more cracks here and there, so I went back over it with the back side of a hobby blade. And then I used that same diluted black wash again. Off screen, I made a foam core box to which I could put in the walls and floor and glued them all together off screen. And then followed this up with a quick rusty paint job of a door, just using three rust tones. and followed it up with a quick wash of Agrax Earthshade. I then took this old bottle that I got from a whiskey distillery once and made some modifications using some styrene strips and filled the bottle with some green soap. 
is soap the right thing to be using in this situation? I don't know. I could have used resin, but this is what I had on hand and I liked the look of it. So I went with it. I then drilled a hole and glued a green LED in the lid. I found this really cool floating cosmonaut and I gave him a quick paint job off camera. I glued a piece of fishing line to the back of the cosmonaut just to make sure he wouldn't sink. And then he was ready for his fate to be doomed to this bottle for the rest of eternity. Along with finding that cosmonaut, I found these really cool hazmat looking guys. I went for a pretty simple color scheme, just some green. I then focused the highlighting on the sides of the figures, figuring that they weren't being lit from the sun, but actually lit from the tunnel lights. Along with printing off the cosmonaut and the little figures, I also printed off a door. I painted the door in a similar fashion to the other door. I just sponged on some rusty colors as a base coat. I've only ever used chipping fluid like Vallejo's or AK's, and this time I wanted to try the old school method of hairspray chipping. I kind of wanted to do this whole project without busting out the airbrush. So I just took some of the cheapest hairspray I could get, sprayed it on, and dried it with a hairdryer. With the hairspray dry, I then painted the door another green color. Hey, don't blame me, ask the Soviets why they like green so much. Once the paint was dry, I went back at it with a wet brush to help poke, prod, and just generally start scraping away to activate that hairspray again. The hairspray method seemed to work well enough for me. I think either, either way, using normal chipping fluid from like Vallejo or this works just as well. And honestly, not having to clean an airbrush after that is actually kind of a big plus, so I might use it in the future, who knows. Then it was time to go paint the rocks. I used a light tan khaki color called Territorial Beige from Apple Barrel. Followed this up with a pretty diluted black wash. Once the wash was dry, I went back over with a lighter beige tan color and did more of a heavier dry brushing just to get more of the mid-tones in and then ultimately followed it up with an even lighter dry brushing. Finishing off from the rocks, I moved on to painting the concrete. For this, I just used Vallejo Deck Tan. With the painting out of the way, I then used some masking tape to create a little bit of a border so I could apply the dirt texture. Speaking of dirt texture, all I did was I mixed a little bit of plaster of Paris with some dirt from my backyard, some matte Mod Podge, and a little bit of some paint for some color. Once it was thoroughly mixed, I just applied with a spatula. Once it was applied, I hit it with some water to get rid of some of the spatula marks and used a wet paintbrush to help roughen it up a little bit. I think it came out pretty decently, but I felt like it needed a little bit more. So off camera, I applied dirt texture in my typical way, which I think did the final trick. With the ground and dirt texture applied, I went about adding some rocks to the base of the tunnel. With the paint and the groundwork sorted, I now needed to add the wooden support beam. In this case, just some simple matchsticks, or as Walmart calls them, mini wood sticks. Made from real wood. Yeah, I sure hope they were, Jesus. Well, anyway, we're gonna have to deal with the color as they're just way too bright coming out of the packaging. So I just went with Luke Talon's traditional staining method. It gives the wood a very good aged feel, so it's one of my favorites. Taking that freshly aged wood, I went about placing them around the tunnels. I tried finding places where I could just press fit them and they would hold together naturally, but for the most part, I still needed to use glue to keep it all together. And around the halfway point, it was coming together pretty nicely. I ended up making an enclosure for the cosmonaut and glued that to the bottom of the mine. Along with the other 3D printed elements, I'd also printed up some stuff for the, for the room as well. From there, I went about drilling some holes for some LEDs, along with placing some of the figures down. Wanting to add a little bit more detail to the tunnels themselves, I took an old ethernet cable I had and took all of the individual wires out of it, took one of the strands and painted it black, or actually a dark gray, and ran those to where all of the LEDs were gonna be. Happy with the inside of the mine, I then focused on the top. I went about placing some bushes that I made a while back ago. It 
and placing some pre-made and some homemade grass tufts. And then to further break up some of the uniformity of the ground, I sprinkled over some dead leaves. I actually find when making these dead leaves, which are literally just leaves from my front yard, crunched up, blended together, I find it better not to remove some of the larger chunks because they look more like twigs and, or small pieces of wood, which just adds more texture. Realizing the room the cosmonaut was in was just far too clean for my liking, I went over it with some winter streaking grime just to help unify and tie everything together and just make it overall as gross as I wanted. Being in enamel paint, I just used some odorless mineral spirits to help blend and thin down the slimy grime. Happy with that, I gave the sides a coat of black paint and it was done. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, and thank you guys so much for a thousand subs. I, just talking about it right now, is, it blows me away. I never would have imagined 10 people, let alone a thousand subbing to me. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you like what you saw and you wanna see some more, click here. My next project's actually gonna be entered in the very last Encounter Trains 10x10 build. I've actually never done one of these in the past, this is the very first competition I've ever entered in. But considering it's the last one I wanted to try, I'm only 50% done and I've spent a lot of time working on this, I need to get back to it. So I'll catch you guys in the next one.